Just a quick overview now of the different styles of extruders that are on the market. Um, you know, in general, you can break them down into three main categories. Uh, there are a lot of different variations of these, but uh, there are kind of three main types that you'll see. The Greg's weight extruders that you'll see on RepRaps and Molesbot and a lot of other three millimeter machines. Uh, the direct drive extruders that you'll see on uh, MakerBots and LeapFrogs and a lot of the other 1.75 millimeter machines and then Bowden extruders, which you'll see on both, 1.75 and 3, but um, in a lot of cases these are on Delta style printers or others where you're trying to um, reduce the inertia of the print head. Um, okay, starting out with the, the direct drive here, uh, this is the one that we've already been looking at. Um, the name comes from the fact that the, the drive gear is mounted directly onto the shaft of the stepper motor, um, and you have some spring-loaded arm uh, with a roller bearing or something else creating a nip force against that drive gear and that's pushing the filament down into the hot end. The Greg's weight extruder is not very different from that at all. It's um, the same setup. You have a drive gear or you have a, a hobbed region um, that is creating a nip force and uh, pushing the filament down in, but the main difference is that rather than the drive gear being directly connected to the stepper motor, it's on a bolt or shaft going through a larger gear, and then that gear is being driven by the stepper motor. Um, so you get a torque multiplier out of this, you know, the, this gear reduction, so that um, you can create a much larger force on the filament. And the reason you need that force is in order to generate the same pressure in the hot end and get the same kind of flow out of the, a similar size nozzle, um, you need a much larger force on the filament to, to get that pressure. Um, the Bowden style extruder is, it, it could be um, a similar drive setup to either of these, but uh, the main difference is that the drive portion is mounted on a fixed point on the printer and the hot end is all that moves. So the, um, in this case I'm showing a, a direct drive setup where your drive gear and your nip force is here and um, you're pushing this filament all the way through the guide tube to the hot end. That's, in, that's what defines about an extruder. Um, so in, inside that guide tube, um, you can get compression of, of a flexible filament and you can get it buckling in there. So this setup is not ideal for Ninja Flex or for other flexible filaments. You still can get decent prints with this setup, but um, in general, only in cases where you have like a continuous part, if you're printing a tube or if you're printing um, something where you're not picking up and, and starting again and um, you're not worried about pulling strings back and forth. Um, but really, any of these can work with NinjaFlex. It's just a matter of how well you'll be able to dial it in and how um, good your final print qualities will be. In general, these two um, give the, the best results and uh, you know, as long as um, all of the details are taken care of, uh, these two can will, will function um, comparably. You know, you can get excellent prints with either of these with NinjaFlex, as long as all the things like the guide tubes and the uh, support material and roughness in your hot end, all those things are taken care of, uh, then either of these designs, these base designs, can work well.